Welcome to Wiltshire. To be more precise, Castle Coombe. Castle Coombe is famous for many things. One, because it once won the prize of the most beautiful village in the country. And of course we all know it is famous for its uh, racing circuit, for cars and motorcycles. But to me, it's famous every May for its very attractive steam rally. Because of the nature of the place and its very location, we always get a grand collection of tractors at Castle Coombe. Uh, it is an agricultural area. Lots of people with the tractors there come from nearby, but of course there are the exceptions who come from far and wide because of the popularity of this lovely little rally that's held there every year, just adjacent to the racing circuit. A fine example there of the old Field Marshal. Now there was a famous tractor that became very popular during World War II. A diesel engine, but an unusual diesel engine, inasmuch as it only had one cylinder, horizontally mounted, a two-stroke diesel. Very unusual vehicle to start, too, and much hilarity has been uh, caused by the people who start them with the, uh, yes, by putting a handle in that flywheel there, or round the front, there's a little tap arrangement that you unscrew and put an igniter uh, cartridge in there and strike it with a hammer or handle and it bounces the old engine into uh, life. They shake and go, but believe me, they shake and go for years and years because there are many of these old tractors still around just like new. Something more delicate now, but not delicate as far as its uh, capabilities concerned, is the Alice Chalmers. Alice Chalmers was, uh, this particular type, was introduced to us during World War II and were very popular with the land girls because they're much lighter to handle than the old standard Fordsons that we are so familiar with in this country. This is the petrol driven version. They came over here under what was known as the lease lend agreement. This was a higher purchase agreement we had with America to help us with our agricultural policy during the war when we just couldn't produce enough of our own tractors. In this country, the War Agricultural Committee was formed, of course, during World War II, and uh, they employed thousands and thousands of not only men, but land girls. A fine example here of the um, Tall Mary, as it was well known, that's the Fortune Major. This followed the uh, well, forever popular Series N standard Fortune, very similar in construction and mechanical bits and pieces, except that after the war they decided that people wanted self-starters, and of course they were built much higher than the old standard Fords. And this was the start of our big tractors in this country. There's a drawbar hitch on the back. Many of these were fitted with the um, three-point system that we should talk about more later on. Not only tractors here at Castle Coombe, but little diesel rollers. This is an interesting little roller here by Barfords, called the Pioneer model. And uh, this was a sort of um, small machine you would see doing um, small rolling jobs. You see on there that it's got a 980cc Jap engine. No, that's got nothing to do with the Far East. That engine was pro produced by Jack Presswick of London who produced literally hundreds of thousands of engines for small vehicles such as this and, of course, the motorcycle industry. Famous old name, the Jap. Quite a simple machine to operate. And to travel backwards was easy. You just merely pulled a lever and it went straight from forward to backwards without any hanging about in between, which was a great help, of course, when you're um, rolling soft materials such as tarmac. We're having a look at another fortune now. This is another fortune major. This one followed on after the Tall Mary that I referred to earlier. And it's uh, slightly different mechanically and, of course, uh, a different engine. These were fitted with um, diesel, the diesel engine as fitted to the um, Ford trucks, whereas some of the old fortune majors we saw earlier were fitted with uh, Perkins diesel engines, but mainly uh, petrol TVO. Fords, by this time, had again changed their colour. This is something that Fords did often during their career. Before the war, they used to paint their tractors orange. But then, because of uh, lack of camouflage during World War II, they went over to the dark green. Then after the war, the dark blue, and then the lighter blue. I believe they're still on lighter blue today. 
Very useful purpose-built trailer here. All the equipment's here at Castle Coon, all the bits and pieces, there for you to see. Looks like someone's been doing a charity run. That's the way to do it, with a tractor. Now this clever little machine was used for the market garden industry, uh, wherever you found these small areas uh, that needed a lot of maneuverability and getting it out of, and it's called a trusty. All sorts of equipment available to it, and a very thoughtful owner here, like many, has put the labels on there so that uh, we, the ignorant, can read a little bit more about it. Normally a little engine on there by Norton or Jap, similar to the motorcycle engines, very economic to use. Useful machine to have in and out, like as I said, the market gardens or the orchards. Now we're over to another orange tractor now, and uh, similar to the colour of the Alice Chalmers, but it's not the Alice Chalmers, this is the Nuffield. Nuffield was the firm owned by Lord Nuffield, Morris of Morris Motors, of course. After the war, they stopped producing military vehicles, so they wanted to do something with their present factory. Rather than pull it down, they started building tractors. There you see it, the BMC 425. BMC, of course, was the British Motor Corporation. And a useful tractor they made in competition with Fords, many of them very much the same size and pattern as the Fords. They were in direct competition. And I must say an immaculate bit of restoration here. There's a three-point linkage system fitted on here, but of course that system was originally invented by Harry Ferguson, one of the most well-known of tractor producers, especially in this country. He invented that system that eventually uh, went over to practically every tractor you see in use today. A fantastic idea that did away with all the separate uh, trailers and bits and pieces of machinery. It, it helped one to buy units that you could uh, lock onto your tractor like anything from a, a pan to carry your bits and pieces in to plows and drags whatever another interesting Leyland here in a pretty color isn't it looks too good to get dirty but having said that a lot of these tractors are used not only at shows like Castle Coombe but in plowing competitions and various uh, things of that nature because the people who own them yeah, I suppose 90% come from farming stock. Well, we're certainly going back a few years now. Well back to the uh, early part of the century when uh, tractors were <laughs> rare machines. America, I suppose, were the leaders in the field because they had a lot more to <laughs> plow and cultivate than we did with our small farms here. International, one of the pioneers of the tractor world, built this Titan. Just a simple engine up on the top of a rugged chassis. Simplicity being the middle name of this old thing. Built out there in Chicago many, many years ago. Just look at it. Not the easiest and most comfortable thing to handle or drive, but uh, nevertheless, they did a good job of work. And still capable of one now. The famous badge of International Harvester from Chicago. Let's see how easy it is to start. There, that's not bad for something about 90 years old, is it? This old faithful always attracts a good crowd at every rally I see. Crowds of interested onlookers to amazed that a thing of that era and that age is still capable of a day's work. And a good crowd too. It's always a very popular rally. And there, patiently waiting to take his immaculate exhibit around the ring is one of our exhibitors. Yes, it's not only tractor to plenty of sideshows too. There's a very popular little um, 
Massey Ferguson. Result of when uh, Ferguson's tied up with Massey Harris to go on producing that famous uh, little tractor, the famous Fergie. And there's Stan, he's the ring marshal getting things organized. And there's a couple of the staff over there. I see the chairman and the vice chairman's wife having a ride in a very interesting vehicle. More about that later. So here comes a little Massey Ferguson. Harry Ferguson designed the first of the Ferguson tractors, which was the Ferguson Brown with David Brown. Then there was a Ford version. Then after the war, they tied in with uh, the standard, the Roots Group when they produced the tractors with the famous uh, standard engine, as you would see in the standard Vanguard, and of course the Triumph TR2. And so it went on until this stage with Massey Harris, the Massey Ferguson. Another big Massey Harris here. The bigger variety, 745. Another Baron Duffields. So we have the ring parade started now. And in all my life of commentating at Castle Coon, I always find it amazing that we get a bigger crowd around the ring for the tractors than any other vehicle. Here a famous old uh, standard Fordson, slightly modified with a Perkins P6 diesel engine. Well, here they come, that interesting load on that interesting old vehicle called a Patterson, but it's basically a Model T Ford. That wonderful old vehicle that were made in their millions by Henry Ford. Simplicity, no gearbox as such, just a set of clutches there. You had to learn which foot to press, etc., to get going. And I had the good fortune of driving that last year and um, got a little bit confusing from time to time. It's one of our Nuffields. Gorgeous color, the Nuffield. Many of the early Nuffields were fitted with the same engine, basically, that were fitted to the Morris lorries just after the war. And then, of course, diesel came in and proper tractor style engines were produced then. Isn't it amazing how people enjoy a ride in something different? It doesn't feel any different when you're there but it, it's the novelty of a ride. I think as human beings we are a strange lot. We do enjoy a ride don't we? Not only just to save our legs but there's something about it. It's a rare Alice Chalmers. It's a bigger one. Alice Chalmers produced one old model called the Model U that um, held the tractor speed record at one time. But it was not held here at Castle Coombe, I can assure you. There she goes, bouncing and throbbing away the big field marshal that we talked about right at the beginning of this. It's a good solid tractor, but not the happiest to sit on all day long, bouncing up and down. Just look at the interest there of our crowd. Chairman's son on his way around now on his own little Alice Chalmers B. Very proud owner he is. And the famous old standard Fordson. Now this would have been a wartime model, which you can see by the smaller mud guards. They cut them back to save uh, metal during World War II. There's the little typical gray Fergie, the Roots model of Ferguson, with a petrol TVO engine. These were so popular Every farmer wanted one, because a lot of farmers, even, in, you know, up until the end of the war, didn't have their own car. They used to get around with the horse and cart, and many of them used to drive these little Fergies to the pub at night or to the dart match. Another famous uh, British bit of tractor there, the David Brown. The Massey Ferguson. And an international. Somewhat different than that old Titan, isn't it? The McCormick Deering International. All these names tying in together. But tractors have got bigger and more powerful over the years. They used to be such docile, gentle old things, jogging along the road about 12 miles an hour. That's another of the Fords and Majors. Now they uh, keep up with the everyday traffic, which I suppose is a good job when you're traveling behind one. And here we've got a fine example of one of the early cabs fitted to the um, Nuffield tractor. Years ago, there was no such thing as a cab. You just sat out there 
possibly with an old sap bag tied around your shoulder to keep the wet off your shoulder blades and neck <laughs> trying to keep off the rheumatics Now they got modern cabs with power steering and stereo. Not so in those days. Typical of some of the internationals, offset so you can watch your furrows and work. Wonderful variety of tractors here. Now we spoke earlier about the standard Fords with the cutback mudguards during the war. This one would have been slightly post-war or perhaps up to about 1940-41 with the full width mudguards. But they were lovely old tractors. Only one foot pedal, that was on the right. You pushed it right down for brake and halfway down for clutch. Or Alice Chalmers. A bit bigger than that slender B we saw. And the Grey Fergie. Produced with a variety of engines. Petrol, TBO, this one's got a diesel engine in. The ever popular Fordson Major. Yes, I did say that there, it's always a very interesting parade. People come to that ring and really crowd around it. Whereas I try to interest them in sometimes the lorries and motorbikes and whatever you have. And the tractors always draw a crowd. As I said, we're right in the heart here of an agricultural community and they do love their tractors. And uh, some of these farmers have owned these tractors and probably used them on their farm for many, many years. And now, rather than part with them, get them up nice and tidy in a state of preservation and proudly take it along the show such as Castle Coombe and other shows and uh, show it off to the crowd and that really is a sight of beauty that little Leyland there isn't it I noticed all our drivers of the male sex today but we do get quite a lot of lady drivers and lady owners mainly farmers wives or probably the sweetheart of some farmer who feels it that's the way she holds on to him come to Castle Coombe and drive the tractor standard fortune in dark blue when they change the color